everyone and welcome to the Oaklerts YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, since we're just a few days away from Christmas, I decided we need a super scrappy last minute Christmas gift idea. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going through a really quick project on a boozy bag. So this can hold a wine bottle. That's pretty much the intention of the bag. So this is the first version I made and it is a standard wine bottle size. So let me go ahead and grab my little wine bottle back there. Okay, so here's the wine bottle that I have. You can see you just put it in. There you go, very basic. Of course I did my two-tone theme because that's just what I do with my bags. I love a double tone. So this just rectangles, it's just a box bottom, no circles, nothing fancy, just a basic strap, no, you know, strap adjuster or crossbody version here. Very basic, but it's a pattern that you can build on a ton. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do the two-tone version. I'm also gonna show you how to add a drawstring channel to it if you wanted to. Drawstring is totally optional. Personally, I wouldn't add it. I don't think it's necessary. However, if you want to, go for it. You can also make this bag in any size you want. So I will have a blog post that goes along with this video that gives you some other size adjustment suggestions, but it's very, very easy for you to tweak the size to whatever it needs to be. For example, here is a much larger bottle of wine. I consider this a 2020 size bottle of wine. And so here is the bigger bag for that. You just plop it in there. You can see on this bag, I did add the little drawstring channel. So if we just pull this, it cinches in place. It really depends on the type of material you're using based on whether this cinch is gonna stay or not. So in these bags, what I did was I actually used like a vinyl or faux leather on the exterior. I use a quilt cotton on the top, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a moment. And then I use waterproof canvas for the lining. Now that waterproof canvas is great because if the bottle sweats, if it gets moist in there, it's not gonna be a problem. However, it is stiff, so when we try the drawstring, it doesn't really stay. It looks cute, we hold it like this, but when you let it go, it doesn't really stay like that. So another option, if you wanted that drawstring look, but you didn't wanna worry about the drawstring channel, is just to make the basic version just like this, grab some ribbon, and then I would just tie the ribbon right at the separation where the two-tone is. There you go. So that's another option if you didn't want to add the drawstring channel, but you wanted that cute pinched look on the top. So these bags can be made out of anything. You want to use cork, use cork. You want to use quilt cotton, use quilt cotton. Cotton canvas, cotton lycra, waterproof canvas, wax canvas, whatever you want to use, you can definitely use this. My suggestion though, my personal suggestion, if you want to use a vinyl or something like that or anything a little bit beefier, use it for the bottom part of this bag. Now you don't have to do the two-tone. I will give you the measurements of just the full size if you just want to make it one piece of fabric. That's totally fine. However, if you're using the waterproof canvas especially, I would suggest you have a strip of quilt cotton here at the top. Just because when we flip it and we top stitch this top edge right here, if you're using the vinyl and the waterproof canvas right here, it can be a little challenging for a domestic sewing machine to really get over those lumps in the seams. So what I do just to make it easier, I use my fun vinyl on the bottom part. I use some quilt cotton that's interfaced with woven interfacing on the top. And then I use waterproof canvas for the interior. It has beautiful structure. It has a nice sturdy bottom but it also makes it easier for me to sew on the very top. Again though, use whatever you want. This is a scrappy project. You can do it however you'd like. You know your machine better than I know your machine. So if your machine is totally capable of going through all those layers of vinyl and waterproof canvas, then go for it. You know what your machine can do. And again, I highly encourage you to build on this. I know a few of you have already reached out and said you're gonna put little slip pockets on here so you can put a gift card in it as well. I think that's gonna be adorable. So I'm so excited to see what you guys do with this. It's a last minute gift idea and just a fun little bag to make. So if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If you change this pattern, leave it down in the comment section. Let me know. Did you shorten it for a tiny bottle? Did you make it a lot bigger for a real big bottle? Did you add a tap to it? Somebody suggested we add like a little tap on the bottom of the bag so we could just, you know, on the go. I told them it's above my pay grade to figure that one out for you guys, but if any of you do it, I wanna know about it and I wanna see it. So send me a picture over at jessica at oakleroots.com or post it on social media and just tag me, I'm at oakleroots. All right, it's a quick one guys, it's a fun one. Let's get started. So this tutorial is a very quick and scrappy one. For the exterior bottom, I'll be using this beautiful shimmer vinyl. This is from My Punk Broidery. I just have one roll here 
And then for the top, I'm using this incredibly fun fabric that was sent to me from Sweet and Charmed Fabric. Thank you so much for sending this over. I'll be using this for that top accent in the bag. Sweet and Charmed also sent over this beautiful stitch fabric right here, which I used in the bag I showed you in the beginning, and it is just adorable. So I will have a link for their shop down below. Go check them out. For the drawstring channel, I'm using just a small piece of quilt cotton. If you were going to buy fabric for this, I would say a fat quarter of each of these is more than enough, and then a roll of vinyl. And then for the lining, I'll be using waterproof canvas. I would suggest more of a half a yard for this just because the cuts can be a little bit bigger depending on the size you're making, but even with a half a yard, you're going to have plenty of extra. Okay, here's some of the other stuff. I have some woven interfacing here. This is Woven Fuse from God Interfacing. I do suggest if you're using quilt cotton on the top of your bag, you interface it. You do want it a little bit beefier. You don't want it to be too loosey goofy and worry about it ripping at any point. So just add this to the quilt cotton on the top of the bag. However, I did not add this to the drawstring channel. The thread I'm using today is just this Mara 70 weight. I also have some of this leather drawstring cording. Each one of these is cut at 30 inches long and I have two of them. You could use ribbon, you could use some fun twine, use whatever you want if you wanted to do that drawstring. And then the needles I'll be using today are the Microtex 8012. If you're using a lot of heavier fabric like vinyl and waterproof canvas, especially for that top, top stitching on the very top of the bag, I would suggest you up it to a 9014. Now, it could be a Microtex or a Universal, but you're gonna want a heavier duty needle if you're gonna be going over thick folded layers of vinyl and waterproof canvas. And as always, get yourself a nice bowl of clips, you're gonna need it. All right, now here are all of the fabric cuts for the bag, there's really not a lot to this. I will have a link for the blog post down in the description of this video that gives you these cuts as well as some optional cuts if you wanna make a bigger size. I will be making the two-tone version today for a regular standard size bottle of wine. For that top, I have two cuts of quilt cotton. Each one is three and a half inches tall by seven inches long, and they are both interfaced with woven interfacing. For the bottom, I'm using two pieces of vinyl. They're not interfaced with anything at all. Each one of these are 12 inches high by seven inches long. So if you wanted to make this bag wider, just adds a few inches to the tops. If you wanna make it shorter, cut down on the size of your bottom piece right here. It's very easy to adapt this panel. If you wanted to just use one piece of fabric here instead of the two-tone, then you're gonna use the same size as you do for the lining. Now for the lining over here, I have two pieces of waterproof canvas, no interfacing at all and each one is 15 inches tall by seven inches wide. Now the drawstring channel is completely optional and there are probably a lot of other ways to build this. This is just kind of what I came up with last minute. So if you have another way to do drawstring channels, make sure you leave that suggestion down in the comment section below. But my standard rule of thumb for the drawstring channel is that it should be three inches high by the width of your exterior minus a half of an inch. So the width of my exterior is seven inches long. So the width of my drawstring channels are going to be six and a half inches long. So you can see in this version here, we don't want the drawstring channels to get in that side seam over here. So we make them a little bit shorter, we fold them down, and that allows us to have, you know, the drawstrings come out both edges. For the strap, I'm using a piece of vinyl, but I also use waterproof canvas pretty often. And this is four inches wide by 18 inches long. If you wanted to make this a crossbody, you go for it. I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible. And then I have just a little fabric tab with my logo because why not? All right, to get started, let's just build our exterior panels. If you're just using one piece of fabric here, you can skip this step. Otherwise, grab your top units and your bottom units and lay it like you want it to be in the end. Take that top unit and fold it right side down so that the bottom edge of the top unit is along the top edge of your bottom unit and then just clip these together, right sides together. Go ahead and repeat this with your other exterior unit. Okay, so now let's take this to the sewing machine and just sew along these two clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have those sewn in place, you can press the seam so that it goes behind the top panel. And if you wanna use an iron for this, you definitely can. Just remember if you're using vinyl on the bottom, be careful to make sure your iron doesn't touch that. I find a finger press, even with the quilt cotton on top, is just fine. So now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch on these top panels an eighth of an inch away from the seam. Make sure you're catching that seam in the top stitching. So the point of it is to hold that seam in place behind the top panels. Now, if you have a woven label or any sort of bag tag you wanna add, now's a good time to do it. 
I'm going to add it to this panel right here. I'm just gonna center it. Remember, we will still be stitching down this top edge, so don't get it too close to that. So I'm just going to hold this in place. You could tape it down if you'd like, and I'm gonna top stitch around all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once your exterior panels are ready to go, go ahead and set them to the side. Next, let's talk about the drawstring channels. Now this is completely optional. Like I said, personally, I probably wouldn't even add it, but if you wanna add it, let's do it. So let's flip them wrong sides up. I'm gonna fold in the short edges, wrong sides together, about 3 eighths of an inch. You can see I'm not measuring it. <laughs> I don't want this pattern to be one that you're kind of like freaking out over the details. This is a nice, easy, scrappy, just get it done project. So I'm eyeballing it, folding them in about 3 eighths of an inch. Repeat this with your other drawstring channel. Okay, once those are folded in, fold your entire drawstring channel in half, wrong sides together with the long edges meeting, and then press along that center fold. Then open up your little hot dog, and then take the parallel long raw edges, fold them in wrong sides together so that they meet that center fold, and press. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So now both of the long raw edges are in towards the center. So now you can see we have a nice little flat piece of fabric and then on the other side there is no raw edges whatsoever. The, uh, the back has raw edges that will be hidden behind where the drawstring is. So go ahead and repeat that with your other drawstring channel. Okay, once you have them both pressed, we can take it to the sewing machine and we're just gonna top stitch along the short edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're top stitching through the top and through those bottom flaps. We're just creating a nice finished edge here. You can do a second row of top stitching, a quarter of an inch as well. I think that would look really nice and help hold it in place. So now grab your exterior panels and lay them right side up. Now, it's up to you where you put your drawstring channel. It depends on your bottle of wine or your bottle of whatever you're using, honestly. You can lay this right over that center seam between the top and the bottom, or you can lay it right underneath it. It's totally up to you. Since I have my tag a little bit low, I'm just gonna lay mine, lining up the top folded edge of my drawstring channel with the bottom edge of the top panel and then just center it. So you can grab a ruler here and center it if you like, or just eyeball it. You wanna have enough space on the sides so when we sew along these side edges, we don't catch our drawstring channel. I'm just gonna use a couple pins here to hold this in place. I know the pin marks are going through the vinyl, but this is the drawstring channel, so the vinyl is not gonna be seen behind this in the end anyways, so I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna do the same on the other one, just lining it up along the bottom edge of my top panel. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this back to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch along both long folded edges of my drawstring channel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end on each side. This should leave a nice hole on the shorter edges on both sides. Okay, so now that the drawstring channels are attached, we can move on to finishing the outer portion of the bag. If you skip this step, welcome back. Okay, so now take your two exterior pieces and lay them right sides together, making sure that the top edges are both on the same top. And then we wanna line up the two long edges and then the bottom edge. So I line up the seam between the top and bottom edges first. If you're doing the two-toned, if not, then it doesn't really matter. And then I'll just pin along both long edges and the bottom edge. Okay, now let's take this to the sewing machine. Let's sew along the long edges and the bottom edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna start at the top up here, go all the way down, cut across the bottom, go all the way back up. Once you have this all stitched in place, now we're gonna box the bottom corners. So grab your ruler. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure in a one inch square from the stitches. 
Now I get this question a lot. Why are we measuring in from the stitches? Why aren't we measuring in from the sides of our fabric? Everybody has a different reason for me. It's because my stitches are more consistent than the sides of my fabric. On my fabric here on my vinyl, it shifted a little bit while I was sewing. So an inch in from one edge of my vinyl is different than an inch in from the other side. So it gets a little skewed, but the stitching is going to be the same, right? When we flip this out, it doesn't matter if one vinyl edge goes out further than the other because that's all gonna be behind the bag. What matters is my stitching. So I box in from the stitches. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line up my one inch grid mark in the corner on the left stitch and on the bottom stitch. So I'm making a one inch box lining up the one inches on my stitching. And then you're just gonna grab a pen. You should use a fabric pen, but I didn't grab one of those and draw a little box just like that. So this box entirely is bigger than an inch. However, from the stitching to the center of the box, it is an inch. Go ahead and repeat this on the other side as well. One inch boxed from the stitches. All right, once you have that marked, grab some scissors and just cut along those marked lines. Here we go. Now let's box our corners. So we're just gonna pick it up from the bottom Put your fingers into the box corner and pull along those corner marks that you made by cutting. So you're pulling the fabric right side together, pulling those seams together. Now, if you're having a hard time getting this right here flat, like it's bowing, you need to go further down on your fabric and pull it apart. So pull from down here instead of just pulling from here. If you pull from the bottom, you can readjust it and get this side right here nice and flat. So I'm just gonna take my seams and fold them in opposite directions. So I have my bottom base seam going to the right and then my side seam going to the left. Straighten them out. Be careful tugging here because these stitches could come undone pretty easy. So be gentle. So when I pull it too, I pin where the seams are and then I add clips down here on the base because like I said, down here towards the bottom of the fabric is how we're gonna keep this line straight. So just like that, go ahead and do the same on the other side. And on the other side, just make sure you rotate your seam in the same direction you did on this side. So you can see now that I flipped it over, this bottom seam is going to the left. So I'm just gonna keep it going to the left and then fold the other side seam in the opposite direction over to the right. That just helps keep this part right here nice and flat. I'm gonna add a clip where the seams meet so now I'm just gonna sew along these two boxed edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Don't sew along these folds over here if you clipped towards the bottom like I did. These are, these are just to help us sew these short spots a little bit easier. All right, there you go. Now you can just turn this whole thing right side out so you can take a look at how cute it is. If you wanna make this easier, use nice, lightweight, thin vinyl for the bottom. When you use that really thick, sticky vinyl, it's a little bit harder to work with all this here. Oh, look how cute this is. That is coming out so adorable. So just make sure that your sides of your drawstring didn't get caught in that seam. Based on how much we folded it and how we cut it, you should be good, but just double check. All right, there we go. Now let's put this to the side for just a moment. Now let's work on the strap. So take your strap and lay it wrong side up. And I'm just gonna grab a ruler and mark a midpoint line. So I'm going two inches in from the long edges and drawing a line just like that, going all the way down the entire strap. You can make this, if you're making a smaller bag, go ahead and make this strap shorter. If you're gonna turn this into like a cute little water bottle bag or juice bag for a kiddo, make this strap shorter. But this is just kind of a good standard size. Now I'm gonna take my long raw edges of my vinyl and fold them up to meet that line, wrong sides together. And I'll just clip along the long edge to hold it in place. You could also use tape here if you'd like. All right, once you have both those long edges folded in, just fold the entire unit so that the two folds come together and those long raw edges are tucked into the center. And then just add each fold to each other's clips. Once you have that clipped in place, let's go ahead and top stitch along both of the long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. OK, 
Okay, there's our strap. Once you have that top stitched, grab your exterior of your bag. And this is how I attach it. So whichever side of your strap you want to be the right side, have that go right side against the right side of your bag. And I'm gonna take one edge and just line it up about a quarter of an inch to the right of the seam between my two panels. And then I'm going to have the strap overhang the raw edge by about a half of an inch. This can be a little tricky to get it all nice and straight if you don't have it overhang. So I'm just gonna have it overhang like that. Now let's go to the sewing machine and just base this on about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge just to hold the strap in place. Okay, we have one edge attached. Now just keep your strap straight and wrap it around your bag so that it comes to the other seam and you're gonna put it on the opposite panel. So my strap is already attached right here to this left panel. Now I'm gonna attach it right sides together with the right side panel. And again, I'm going about a quarter of an inch away on the right from that seam. And then I'm gonna overhang the strap about a half of an inch. There we go. I'll clip this to hold it. And then I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine once again and baste this on at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the top raw edge of my exterior. There we go. I just cannot get over how cute these colors are right now. This is such a fun, it's not a Christmassy bag at all, but it is so cute. This would be a good like Easter bag. Oh, it's so sweet. Okay, let's put this to the side and let's just do the lining and then we just gotta put it together and we're done. Now grab your lining panels and lay them right sides together. The lining is a lot less work because we don't really have a whole lot going on with it. I'm just gonna line up all the edges and then I'm gonna clip along the side edges, which are the two long sides, and then the bottom edge. Okay, now on one of the long edges in the center, mark yourself a four inch opening. This will be for turning later. We don't wanna do it on the bottom because the bottom's a little too small. So we're just gonna turn it on the side. That's gonna be fine. All right, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew along the long edges and the bottom edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Make sure you stop at your marked lines and you backstitch well here since we're gonna be tugging at these a lot. Okay, once you have that done, let's go ahead and box these corners. So once again, I'm measuring an inch in from the stitching and then I'll just mark this. This is just my cut line. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we can just cut right along that marked line. All right, now let's just box these corners. So just like we did before, we're gonna reach in and then tug along those cut corners. Pull from the middle of your fabric to make it easier and then just fold your seams in opposite directions. And remember, this is the lining, so if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Running out of clips. I like to clip towards the bottom to try to help keep it nice and straight. If you're using quilt cotton here, this is gonna be a lot easier than if you're using waterproof canvas. So do this for both sides. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and then just sew along these two short box corners at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're worried about this being a little baggy, you can up it to a half of an inch seam allowance, but you need to start thinking about what the size of the bottle is on the bottom because if it gets a little too small, it might be a little wonky in there. All right, there we go. Now the lining is done. So your lining should be wrong side out. Grab your exterior and your exterior should be right side out. So let's take our exterior right side out, insert it into the lining. So the exterior and the lining are now right sides together. Make sure you insert your strap in there as well. And now we're just gonna line up the seams. So make sure your strap is still overextending the raw edge on the top of the lining and the exterior. Match up your seams from the exterior and the lining. And I like to fold the waterproof canvas seam away from the strap. I find that that helps, especially if I use quilt cotton on the top here, folding that quilt cotton seam towards the strap makes it a little less bulky. Because stitching this right here isn't gonna be a big problem, but when we flip this out and then these seams start getting layered on top of each other, that gets a little bit more difficult if you have a lot of really heavy fabric up here. 
So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna line up my seams and make sure my top raw edges are all lined up. I'm gonna flip that seam away from the strap with the waterproof canvas. There we go. And now I'm just gonna clip along the entire raw edge, lining up my exterior and my lining. Okay, once you have that all clipped in place, let's go sew along this top round edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Depending on how narrow this is, it can be a little tricky. I suggest sewing from the inside, so I just pull back the top like this and sew and just rotate the whole bag and readjust as you go around. Once that's stitched in place, we can just turn this out. I did go over these straps a second time just to really reinforce it, especially if this is gonna be holding something with glass in it. You probably wanna make sure those straps don't come undone. So I'm just gonna pull the exterior out through that hole in the lining. So I pulled the lining and the exterior away from each other first. And then for top stitching, what I do is I actually insert the exterior into the lining so that the bag is inside out. And depending on how thick your exterior material is, this can be not that bad, or this can be kind of challenging. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to roll this top seam here so that it's nice and straight. So if you need to, you can put your hand in the bag, use your fingers to help you get that seam at the top nice and straight. So once I get one section nice, I'll use some clips and just clip it in place. You can also pull on the handle a little bit and that will help straighten everything out. And you can see, even with the quilt cotton here, these seams right here on the corners get a little thick. So if you're not quite sure about your machine, I do suggest using a 9014 needle. I think that every bag maker should always have 9014 needles and jean needles on hand at all time for moments like this where you're just not quite sure. Because even though your needle doesn't break when you go over these big seams, if it's not strong enough, what it's gonna do is leave some really weird looping on the lining side. If you use a strong needle, you just won't have that problem. Okay, so once I have the top seam clipped just to keep it all nice and straight, what I'm gonna do is from the inside of the bag, I'm gonna top stitch along the bag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The reason I do this is because I want the top stitching that I see to be on the exterior side of the bag and it's much easier to sew from the inside of the bag. So I'm just gonna go around top stitching over the top edge and also top stitching over the straps. There we go, now the bag is all top stitched. All we have to do now is close up this lining so you can pull out the exterior if you like just to make sure you don't accidentally sew over it. And then you can just push your fingers into the edges of your lining, flatten out that seam on the sides, and then just press this closed, add a couple clips. Pretty easy. And now let's just go sew over this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, closing it up. There we go, now we can just push the lining into the center of the bag. If you're using waterproof canvas here and you're kind of struggling, uh, Linz from Linz Handmade has suggested that you use a hairdryer to warm up your waterproof canvas and that will make it a lot easier to work with. All right, and you'll see that waterproof canvas makes the bag really firm, which is perfect for a wine bottle. Okay, so if you're not doing the drawstring, you are now done. If you are doing the drawstring, let's just add that in. So I have two pieces of this leather cording. I absolutely love this leather cording. I got it from an Etsy shop. I'll have a link for it in the description. I do suggest you stock up on it. It's just really nice to have in a pinch. So I'm gonna take one end and insert it into one of the drawstring channels and just push it all the way to the other side. If you're using ribbon or anything like that, you could add a safety pin to the end of it and then pull it through. So here we go, I'm gonna pull this drawstring most of the way through, just leaving a little bit out. And then I'm gonna flip my bag over 
and I'm gonna continue with the long side of my drawstring. I'm gonna continue inserting it into the other drawstring channel so that both of the ends on the same drawstring come out on one side. So there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie off this end. I just grab both of them together, loop them together, insert the edges into the loop, and then push and pull on this. This stuff is thick, so there we go. So now I have one drawstring tied off, all done. So now I'm gonna grab the other drawstring and I'm gonna insert this onto the other side because I want both of the ends to come out on the right side since the left side is already taken care of. So I'm just gonna insert this from the right side, push it in, pull it out the side that already has the drawstring with the knot, and give it a good tug, leaving just a little bit on the right. I'm gonna flip the whole bag over. And then I'm gonna take my drawstring end that's long and insert that into the other drawstring channel all the way over. So that now both of the raw edges should be here on the left. And if I give it a tug, try not to get all this tangled up. Here we go. So now you see I have them both coming out of opposite edges. I can just tie off this raw edge just like I did on the other side. And there we go. And it's a little long, but that's okay. But you can see when we pull it, we have a nice drawstring top. However, again, since we're using that waterproof canvas, it just kind of comes undone. So you can always pull it and then tie it if you'd like as well. And there you go, you're all done. Okay, this is adorable. Look how cute that is. I love these colors and I love this vinyl. I'll see if I can find the vinyl that I'm specifically using. And I'll, if I can, I'll leave it in a link down in the description. It is so soft. This is a nice vinyl to have on hand. But look how cute this looks. And look, because my drawstrings were so long, I was able to tie them around the top. You could double tie it. It looks so beautiful like this. So when I open it up, I'm telling you, these, this fabric is incredible. Like this combination and then the pink inside, I don't think I'm giving this one away. I think I'm keeping this one. So you can see I'll pull my wine bottle out. Great size. You can change the size of this for whatever you want to use it for. If you want to use it for a smaller bottle, just cut off some of the base part and now you have a smaller bottle. If you want it for a wider bottle, add some to the sides. You can really adjust this however you'd like. I would suggest you don't make it any more narrow than this though because it does get a little tricky sewing around this top right here. I think if it was any more narrow up here around the top, it would be just a little too difficult. Now I'm calling these boozy bags because the intention was for wine. So that's a great purpose for them. However, if you didn't want to use them for booze, you could of course use them for water bottles, whatever you want. You could also use them for treats. So in this bag here, it does fit. It's a little tight, but it does fit. I have one of those candy little boozy bottles. So if you had something like that, this is a fun gift for everybody. You could also just take a bunch of candy and then just fill this up with candy, add a nice little drawstring, tie it up, bam. Easy, fun, last minute gift very personal, it's still handmade. I know a lot of us, it's very important for us to give handmade, even if we don't have the time and the resources to make the really expensive, fancy bag and all that stuff, but we still wanna make something for somebody we really care about, this is a great alternative. You can make this as luxurious and fancy or as simple and quick as you want. So thank you so much for sewing along with me today. I hope that this inspires you to go out and make a bunch of boozy bags. You can call them whatever you want. Fill them with whatever you want. Just have a good time with them. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. If you're celebrating, get out there and make something. Bye.